learning outcomes after studying this module you shall be able to know rubber stamp and seal impression you will able to identify the characteristics of a rubber stamps and seal impressions you will learn about the examination procedure for analysis of rubber and seal impression introduction rubber stamp rubber stamping is also stamping is a craft in which some type of ink made of dye or pigment is applied to an image or pattern that has been carved molded laser engraved or vulcanized onto a sheet of rubber the rubber is often mounted onto a more stable object such as the wood bricks or acrylic block increasingly the vulcanized rubber image with an adhesive form backing is attached to a cling vinyl sheet which allows it to used with acrylic handle for support these cling rubber stamps can be stored in a smaller amount of space and typically cost less than the wood mounted versions they can also be positioned with a greater amount of accuracy due to the stamper's ability to see through the handle being used tempered stamps with simple design can be carved from a potato the ink coated rubber stamp is pressed onto any type of medium such that the colored image is transferred to the medium the medium is generally sometimes of fabric or paper other media used are wood metal glass plastic rock high volume batik uses liquid wax instead of ink or metal stamp next we have the seal a seal is a device for making an impression in a wax clay paper or sometimes medium including an embossment on a paper and is also the impression thus made the original purpose was to authenticate a document a wrapper for one such as a modern envelope or the over of a container or package holding valuables or other objects the seal making device is also referred to as the seal matrix or die the imprint it creates as the seal impression or more rarely the sealing if the impression is made purely as a relief resulting from greater pressure on the paper where the high parts of matrix touch the seal is known as dry seal in other cases ink or another liquid or liquefied medium is used another color than the paper in most traditional forms of dry seal the design or seal matrix is in intaglio that is cut below the flat surface and therefore the design on the impression made is in relief raised above the surface the design on the impression will reverse to be a mirror image of that matrix which is specially important when script is included in the design as it is very often is this will not be the case if paper is embossed from behind where the matrix an impression read the same way and both matrix and impression are in relief however an engraved gems were often carved in relief called the cameo in context giving a counter relief or intaglio impression when used as seals the process is essentially that of a mold most seal have always given a single impression on an essential flat surface but in medieval euro two sided seals with two matrices were often used by institutions or rulers such as towns bishops and kings to make two side or fully three dimensional impression in a wax with a tag a piece of a ribbon or stripe of parchment running through them the pendant seal signature 
dangles below the document the authenticate to which the attachment tag was seven or otherwise attached. Single sided seals were treated in the same way. In the 1982 edition of Scientific Examination of Question Document, Ordway Hilton wrote As any officer, laboratory device, the hand or impression stamp is convenient to use and useful as a field of investigation for a document examiner. It is rather infrequent but diversified. Much of its diversity lies in the great variety of stamps in use, those of fixed letter design, those made up entirely of loose type, the facsimile signature stamp, those with rotating sections of time date stamp variety. The date stamps will immovable strips of type and then combination of these the diversity is not limited to the classification based upon makeup. The actual material from which the stamp is constructed and is mode of manufacture adds to the possible varieties. Next we have stamp and seal impressions. Stamp classification is not based on the type of dye material but rather the location of the ink source. Based on the ink source location there are four main types of conventional stamps encountered by forensic document examiner in their case work. The hand stamp, the self inking stamp, the pre ink stamp and the flat die stamp. Personal business and industrial use rubber stamps are produced by the same manufacturing process and are classified by the ink source. However, the dye material and ink differs in the industrial setting due to the marking needs of a particular industry. Even though discussion in this context is limited to the personal or business use rubber stamp, the forensic document examiner should be aware that other dye materials are used in the industrial setting. Personal and business use hand and self inking stamps containing dyes made up of vulcanized rubber or polyester. The dye of a hand stamp is mounted on a die plate attached to a knob, handle, mount or a molded mount. Because the die is exposed to its surrounding environment, it is subjected to damage and debris contamination. Linking of the date of the die is accomplished by manually pressing the die onto the stamp bed in order to obtain ink coverage. The inking process of the hand stamp is achieved manually while the inking process of the self inker is achieved mechanically. The self inking stamp consists of container, usually a plastic, that houses the stamp die and ink pad. Since the die in the container that usually has a cover, it is protected from excessive debris contamination or cuts and other damage that can occur as a result of colliding with other objects one may find in or on a person's desk. For inking, die rotates 180 degree to press into the ink pad when top of the container is pressed down. The first two classification concerns dyes that primarily use water-based inks. The third classification includes pre-inked stamps characterized by a high relief dye and as a general rule use oil-based ink, salt lynched rubber, foam and powder and Premixed gel are the material used to make high relief pre ink stem. With the ink pad sandwiched between the die and the die holder, depending on their intended use, water oil based inks are used in a flat die stem. Now, let us learn about the characteristics of rubber stamp and seal impression. The characteristics a forensic document examiner observed in a stamp impression are influenced by the dye materials, whether the ink is water based or oil based, the size of the stem, the type of paper, the interaction of the ink to the paper and the individual making of the impression. The two most common causes of a less than perfect stamp impression involve the mechanics of stamping that is falling to hold the stamp correctly creating an uneven impression 
and using too much force when making the impression causing the stamp to bounce. Difference are observed between the impressions made by hand or self inking stamps and pre inked stamps. As a general rule, it would be difficult to make a definitive statement as to the type of stamp that made the question impression. However, characteristic observed in a stamp impression can provide clues as to the dye material of the suspect stamp. Vulcanized rubber and polyester are the common material used for hand and self inking stamp dyes. These two materials are non porous and do not retain ink. Whether the material is vulcanized rubber or polyester, they share some characteristics in their impression like even ink coverage, ring of darker ink outlining the individual letter known as squeeze effect. The ring occurs as a result of relief of the printing area squeezing the ink out of the edge of the ink line. This characteristic is difficult to observe if the entire character is heavily inked. Absence of indentation in the ink line, rounded beginning and ending of letters. If water based ink is used, the bleeding of ink through the paper is minimal. Ink filling in sharp angles and intersection points of the two lines. Some patchy areas within the ink impression may be observed uneven outline of the letter. Due to its porosity, the dye of a pre-inked stem serves as its own ink reservoir. The materials commonly used for pre-inked dyes include pre-mixed gel, salt lynch rubber and foam and powder. Dyes made of foam and powder can contain water oil based ink. The remaining dye materials only use oil based ink for personal or business use. Since the dye of a pre ink stem is soft, has some flexibility, the impression differs slightly from the characteristics one would observe in the impression produced by a hard self inking stem. The characteristics are clean and concise detail, even ink saturation throughout the individual characters, absence of heavier ink line on the inside or outside of the letter form, feathering or bleeding of ink on the edges of the letter, rounded beginnings and endings of the letter, absence of an indentation in ink line, blurring of distortion in a small type text, oil based ink bleeding through the paper. Flat dye stems are divided into two categories, light brushed and thermal printer technology. Light brush technology uses xenon flash to seal the non-printed areas of the dye. The only ports left open that allow ink to pass through the dye will be printed areas. Heat is used in the thermal printer technology to seal the micro pores in the non-printed area of the flat dye. The characteristics of an impression from either flat dye category closely mirror the characteristics found in pre-ink stamp impression. However, a few of the flat dye stamps produce impression that contain characteristics that are more unique to a particular model. For example, the brother SC300PC makes flat dye stamps using thermal printer technology. This particular model was one of the first flat dye machine marketed in general public. The impression made from a brother SC300PC flat dye stamp will reflect a dot matrix pattern within the printed text. The dot matrix pattern varies in relation to the type of size of text. As the type size becomes smaller, the matrix involves into a soft tooth pattern. Conversely, the larger the stamp, the more dots in the printed text. Aside from the unique pattern, the remaining characteristics of the impression mimic those observed in the pre ink stamp impression. Now let us see the examination process. A great deal of evidential information is overlooked when a stamp impression on a document is not included in the examination. By taking the time to examine the overlooked evidence, the document examiner may able to provide additional information to the submitter. For example, a case was submitted requesting handwriting, signature and printing process examination in a group of documents. The investigator did not ask about the notary stamps because the stamp impression were included 
in the examination. The submitter was given the additional investigative information as the microscopic examination of stamp impression revealed that they were product of an inkjet printer and not the rubber stamp. The standard guide for examination of rubber stamp that is ASTME 228903 published by American Society for Testing and Materials International is a guideline of procedures for forensic document examination should follow in their examination of cases involving rubber stamp and their impression. The procedure discussed in this section contain more detail than found in the guide but in agreement with the published ASTM guide, the examination of rubber stamp or impression requires a methodological approach. As with any document examination, the forensic document examiner must consider the limitation inherent in the evidence. Intrinsic limitation in the rubber stamp impression are determined by combination of following various factors like the manufacturing process, the material used for stamp, the type of ink, the type of material hosting the impression and the stamping style of the individual operating the stamp. Having a knowledge base of various dye material and the manufacturing processes employed to the produced rubber stamps is a key to assigning proper weight to any observed anomalies. There are two main types of defect, those that occur in the manufacturing process and those that occur through the use or abuse of stamp. Sources of manufacturing defects is include damage to the original image, defective dye material, distortion or misalignment, poor quality control, damage caused by cutting the stamp, bubbles and impurities such as dirt. In order to classify or determine the source of defect, the document examiner must have suspected stamp. Determination or classification of defects cannot be made from examination of the impression. The defect's significance is that, that is, the class and individual is determined by the stage of occurrence within the manufacturing process. For example, an air bubble can occur in different stages of manufacturing. The air bubble would be a class characteristic if it is bakelite mold used to produce vulcanized rubber stamps. Every stamp made from that particular mold would have the air bubble in the same location. If the air bubble was created by air becoming trapped during the placement of rubber on the top bakelite mold prior to the vulcanization, the air bubble would be unique to that dye and therefore would be an individual characteristic. Individual defects more commonly occur through use or abuse of stem like dirt, paper, fiber, accumulated ink, nicks and cuts, edge wear and breakdown and stamp distortion are few of the causes of defects to appear in the impression. The individual defects can be transitory and care must be given in handling of the stem so as to not to affect the amount or location of the object causing the defect. For example, dirt, hair, fiber and accumulated ink are transitory can be removed as a result of handling or cleaning of the dye. Next, cuts, edge wear and breakdown and stamp distortion are permanent defects as they are a part of dye. Both transitory and permanent objects can create individual defects that can assist in identification or elimination of a stamp making a suspect impression. The first step in the examination of stamp impression is to examine it microscopically to make sure you have a stamp impression and not an image created by another printing process such an inkjet printer or a copier. If the image was created by another printing process and not by rubber stamp, the document examiner is limited to a qualified report as he or she is restricted to examining only the gross characteristic of the text. That is, the image reflects the same general characteristics of the type style, type size, arrangement and design of the submitted rubber stamp. If a suspected stamp is submitted, conduct a visual inspection to determine the presence of permanent or transitory defect. 
determination of ink source and the condition of stamp die container and the ink pad also can be made during this visual inspection. The container or mount that is hand stamp contains an index also known as title that frequently is made from one of the first impression of the stamp. The name of the stamp manufacturer or stamp shop that made stamp may be displayed on the container and the handle. This information may assist in locating the business that made the stamp. A microscopic examination to search for anomalies follows the visual inspection. Notation of both the visual and microscopic examination or inspection should be made. It is a good practice to photograph the stem and its dye in order to record its condition when it was submitted. Once this step has been completed, the next step is to compare the submitted rubber stem to the question impression. Are they in the agreement in the class characteristics, type size, type style, arrangement and design? If so, the examination proceeds forward. If there is any disagreement in class characteristics, an elimination is justified as the submitted rubber stamp could not have produced the suspected impression. The microscopic examination of stamp dye and impression should include both direct and oblique light. The direct lighting provides even illumination of the area being examined to determine the manufacturing process used to create the dye. Oblique lighting coupled with a higher magnification narrows the focus of the examination to detect even the smallest of the defects and to determine whether they are permanent or transitory. Upon completion of an examination is conducted. The forensic document examiners makes numerous impression from submitted stamp on a substrate that is similar to the material hosting the question impression. If the submitted stamp die is covered by transit material like dirt, hair, accumulated ink, etc., and the question impression does not reflect defects that may have been sourced to the transit material, it may be necessary to clean the stamp in order to obtain impression free from transit material. Prior to cleaning, the stamp should be photographed to document the condition in which it was received. It is important to stress the stamp die should not be cleaned until numerous impressions have been made that reflect the condition of the stamp when submitted. Ink saturation and the angle at which the stamp die contacts the printing media determine whether defects on the die will be replicated in the impression. A heavily inked impression may not reveal a small defect due to filling of ink of the white area. It is unknown how the stamp was held by the suspect of the angle of the die as it contacted the paper. Because of these unknown factors, the forensic document examiner produces numerous known impressions of varying ink, saturation and of the die contacting the paper at different angles. Collecting a series of impressions without re-inking the die of the suspect stem is the proper method of obtaining impression with a progressive decrease in ink saturation. For a self-inking or hand stem, make sure the dye is adequately inked prior to the producing the first impression. The ink coverage in the impression will be optimum in the first impression. By not re-inking between the impression, the ink coverage gradually decreases with each successive impression. From the 10 to 20 consecutive impressions, the document examiner should observe the decrease in the ink saturation with each successive impression. The classification of stamp will determine the range of ink saturation that can be obtained from a suspected stamp. For example, impression made from a hand or self-inking stem will reflect a wide range of ink saturation compared to the impression made from a stem dial that is not inked in between impression. A pre-inked stem such as pre-mixed gel has its ink in the dye. The document examiner must produce the consecutive impression 
quickly in order to observe some decrease in the ink saturation. The range of ink saturation is not dramatic in pre-ink stem because the ink filled dye is comprised of impregnated or microcapsulated ink cell. The consecutive impression must be made quickly to prevent the cells from replenishing ink to the top portion of the dye that contacts the paper. Even though flat dye stems are characterized as pre-ink stem, obtaining lighter impression from continuous stamping is difficult since ink only exists through the open pores of the text. The ink supply is not depleted. A characteristic of a flat dye ink impression is that the ink saturation will be same from the first through the 20 successive impressions. The next step is to change the angle of dye contacting the paper when making an impression. Obtaining impression where even pressure is applied to the dye allows the examiner to determine how evenly the ink is spread throughout the text. Impression produced by the dye contacting the paper unevenly that is at a different angles allow the document examiner to observe how the impression appears when the angles and the pressure application changes. Rocking the stamp side to side or front to back can cause transit characteristics directly attributable to the improper handling of the stamp during the production of impression. Once the known impression has been produced, a side by side comparison is conducted with the question impression to determine if they came from same source or not. Now let us go through the summary. Rubber stamping also called stamping is a craft in which some type of ink made of dye or pigment is applied to an image or a pattern that has been carved, molded, laser, engraved or vulcanized onto a sheet of rubber. A seal is a device for making an impression in a wax, clay, paper or some other medium including an embossment on paper and is also an impression thus made. Based on the ink source location, there are four main types of conventional stamps encountered by forensic document examiners in his case work. The hand stem, the self inking stem, the pre ink stem and the flat dye stem. Vulcanized rubber and photopolymer are the most common materials used for hand and self inking stamp type. These two materials are non-porous and do not retain ink. The document examiner must produce the consecutive impressions quickly in order to observe some decrease in the ink saturation. Thank you.